Okay, good day and welcome to uh, another of our Wikisite uh, discussion series um, webinar events. Uh, today we are very uh, lucky to have uh, Megan Waka with us to talk about um, scholarly identities. Um, firstly, I want to thank um, the uh, to thank IFLA for supporting this series um, and providing us with the opportunity to make these recordings. Uh, I also want to uh, thank, extend our thanks to the Wikisite project um, for the, the grant that we received to make this project and also to the Wikimedia Foundation um, for supporting this work. Um, and I also want to uh, thank our Wikidata working group for working on this project. And the IFLA Wikidata working group uh, exists to um, extend and provide support for working within the uh, Wikidata and Wikibase uh, projects coming from the library community. Um, and so today we're going to have a discussion, as I said, about um, um, scholarly profiles. And with us, we have uh, Megan Waka, and we're so, so lucky to have, um, uh, to have uh, the with us because uh, there's such um, a leader in this area. And Megan Waka advances equitable access to information through dual roles in libraries and the Wikimedia movement. During the day, Meg leads scholarly communication initiatives at the City University of New York, a federated institution of 25 colleges and 31 libraries serving the people of New York City. On nights and weekends, Meg is an active Wikimedian and the president of Wikimedia New York City, a volunteer run not a nonprofit committed to connecting New Yorkers and New York institutions with Wikipedia, Wikimedia, and the larger cultural movement. And I'll just add my own um, personal note that uh, I think Meg was one of the very first um, people I met in my Wikimedia journey. And so I'm really grateful that they could be joining us today to talk about this important issue. Um, and just before we get into the discussion itself, I also want to talk a little bit about how important this is in our current moment um, with uh, the COVID-19 global pandemic, as we know that research and access to research is such an important part of uh, combating the, the virus. Um, and so today we're going to be uh, working through uh, a number of questions. And so a fundamental question to thinking about um, this work is, talking about how the Wikisite project interconnects with the goals and aims of open scholarship programs within libraries. And so I'm gonna turn it over to Meg to answer that question. Great, thanks Stacey. Um, and thanks so much to you Stacey and to the other members of IFLA's Wikidata Working Group for inviting me here for the conversation today. Um, I am really excited to talk um, all things uh, Wikisite, Wikidata and um, the scholarly publishing ecosystem because I think um, you know, as you said, Stacey, especially right now, it's absolutely integral to, um, to so many different aspects of our lives. Um, you know, I think with Wikisite and the open knowledge programs within libraries, um, they share many of the same practices, right? So not only is content openly available, but it's distributed on open source software and adheres to fair data principles. So that's uh, findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. And that's absolutely critical. But what I get really excited about are the principles that inform these areas of work, right? Um, the Wikimedia movement and the open access movement launched within just a couple of years of each other um, back in the uh, 2000, 2002. Um, and both uh, aim to remove financial, legal, and technical barriers to knowledge. The open access movement that really initially focused on scholarly research, so secondary sources, and in the Wikimedia movement upon, you know, nothing less than the sum of all human knowledge. Um, uh, so using these secondary sources to write a tertiary one, to write an encyclopedia. And whether we're talking about the secondary or the tertiary sources, we um, both areas look to the citation in order to understand how that knowledge is constructed. Uh, citation needed, uh, as the saying goes. In libraries and on Wikimedia projects, the citation can be used to verify a statement or a fact. Uh, to measure impact via bibliometrics. It does a lot of different things. Um, and as the scholarly publishing ecosystem evolves under open access, um, 
under the ability to electronically distribute information online, uh, the bibliographic citation is really central to understanding how that happens. So with Wikisite, it's not just that it's open data on an open source platform, it can also be a place of inquiry. Uh, you know, I would love to see the moment, for instance, when we might look to draw relationships using Wikidata, using Wikisite, draw relationships between the geographic location of where an author is conducting their research and the geographic location of the journal publishing it. See how that changes over time or with funding. Um, and I really think that the linked data environment of Wikidata, of Wikisite, allows us to ask those new questions of the bibliographic universe um, and really seek out new answers. Um, and that's incredibly exciting to me. Uh, yeah, thank you. And I think that's such an important question that maybe um, we haven't thought about so much in terms of bibliographic data about looking at some of those patterns between researcher location, uh, publication location, and, and watching those things over time. Again, we know that when we look at um, research itself, that um, who is publishing where, who has access to what, what publishing platforms is really important. And so um, one of the questions that we think about in this area is the relationship between Wikisite and Wikidata in terms of, of filling a gap within research or citation networks. It's not like mm -hmm. research or citation networks is new. That's something right. that we've been working on in libraries for ever in a lot of ways. Um, but what do, do Wikisite or Wikidata uh, provide that isn't available elsewhere? Yeah, I mean, so the first thing that Wikisite offers is the possibility of better data. Um, the utility of most commercial products is undermined by their proprietary nature. Um, many legacy publishers don't openly share their bibliographic data, um, and as such, the indexing and analytics products that they sell can only really ask questions um, of the bibliographic corpus that they have access to. Um, you know, right now, Wikisite and Wikidata have a disciplinary bias in the sciences um, because that data is uh, most easily available for batch ingest. But as members of the Wikisite community advocate to more publishers to share their data and as individual editors contribute the data that they have access to, that data is not only going to grow, it's going to be improved by the community. Uh, there's a lot of momentum to do that work. Um, I never never tire of looking at the percentage of um, wiki data that is already bibliographic citations. Um, the last time I looked, uh, the report was that over 80 million items, uh, of the over 80 million items in Wikidata, 34% of them, uh, that's over 29 million, uh, are citations. Those are citations that are uh, continuously being improved by Wikidata and scholars, librarians, members of the public, um, and hopefully the people that eventually listen to this, this conversation. Um, but in addition to better data, which is really important, Wikisite also offers the possibility of really sustainable infrastructure informed by library values and scholar need. Um, increasingly, we're seeing library vendors move into big data, either selling products that provide metrics or as Elsevier did, entirely rebranding from a publisher into an information analytics company. Um, it's difficult for me to talk about this without also sort of sharing this, um, this image created by Project Knowledge Gap, uh, which is uh, led by Leslie Chan uh, out of the University of Toronto. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and share uh, that slide. in a moment. <laughs> okay. Um, so as I said, these were um, created by Project Knowledge Gap. Um, and what they've done in this uh, image is that they've mapped the stages of the academic knowledge production process, right? Um, so the first moment that a researcher develops their question um, to the finding, you know, through the publication process and those final stages in which it's um, put out to their community of peers um, for networking purposes, to build upon that research, um, and ultimately to find uh, different academic employments. 
Um, but over the course of the last several years, we've seen Elsevier and other commercial entities buy up products in other stages of the process, right? So the traditional publishing role is in the center here, marked out by the gray. But over these years, they've bought products that also relate to that first moment when they're asking the research question, to that final moment when they're looking for academic employment, essentially enclosing the entire academic knowledge production process within a proprietary platform. Um, and so it, it's really clear that some of these entities um, you know, explicitly want to become the means of production, uh, not just of scholarly publishing, but of academia. Uh, a 2019 landscape analysis released by Spark, um, if you haven't read it, I can highly recommend it. Um, you know, it's, it's incredibly well researched and it shows the ways in which major decisions by the university, so decisions around hiring, tenure and promotion, um, these decisions are being outsourced to vendors through products like Pure, um, here, the researcher identity management system uh, advertised uh, by this image. This, this comes from one of these brochures. And that's a real threat to academic freedom and the circulation of ideas. Um, and by contrast, in the library and open access communities, we're seeing a call for bibliodiversity. Kathleen Shear, Leslie Chan, and others um, published an incredible paper um, just a few months ago about this. Um, and this is a call for diversity in services and platforms, funding mechanisms, evaluation measures that will allow the SCALCOM system and the diverse needs within it to thrive. Um, and this is really in direct opposition to the vendor lock-in that we saw in the previous slide. I believe that Wikisite can provide an alternative because it shares a vision of distributed community-owned infrastructure that privileges local knowledge. And we see this um, in the, this image. Uh, this comes from a recent strategy document published by Wikimedia Deutschland. And in it, we see a commitment not to making Wikidata the central hub of all knowledge, but a place to connect to it. That like Wikisite, um, libraries and publishers can use the software Wikibase to build their own version of Wikidata, control the integrity of the data related to their institution, but also share it with others through a federated system, right? This is, this is a real possibility. And it's a possibility that um, provides an opportunity to move the infrastructure of the bibliographic universe back to the realm of libraries, not with commercial or even nonprofit organizations that have a history of locking us out, right? And so um, I, I hope it's one that, that we, that we take on. Yeah, and I think um, what you just talked about, again, really comes to the fore in the sort of current time when we think about, yeah. again, the, the sort of business of research and mm -hmm. research data and, and citations. So sometimes when we think about bibliographic data, we, we tend to think about the data related to, to things like books and right. um, recordings, but right. not necessarily the, the data related to research publications, because I think from the cataloging, I come from my, from my cataloger hat on, we tend to not record individual articles. Yeah. But what has happened is, is the, the, the business involved, I mean, this is coming, I could probably go on about the neoliberal university and sort mm -hmm. of the, the business side of, yeah. of competition between right. institutions. And so that, that then gets, um, integrated into this whole, as you, as you spoke so well to Meg, about the whole system of, of production that becomes what is being produced out of universities and, and what does that look like? And yeah, Leslie Chen so well points to some of those problems. So when we look at something specifically, when we come down to one sort of piece of how we think about this network of, um, uh, I don't know what the word, the word is I'm looking for, but scholar identities in particular is mm -hmm. one aspect of that whole overarching sort of mode of production. And so if we talk specifically about scholarly profiles or scholar identities, what is that? And then again, coming back to, you know, you, you showed us an image of, of what that production line looks like. <laughs> I mean, it is an actual production line and, yeah. the, and it is producing researchers as products as well. Right. And I think mm -hmm. that is part of it and, and privileging certain 
um, through those mechanics and, and the systems of exposing certain kinds of data yeah. on, on the net, make some products more visible than others. I mean, that's, that's kind of where it comes down to when we talk about mm -hmm. identity. And that is problematic in the context of equity. And we'll get a little bit more into this later. But yeah. I wonder if you can sort of speak to the, the aspect of that, that is scholar identities and the ways that Wikisite and Wikidata can sort of combat that production line uh, model or the, the big hopper that is taking in all of the pieces to spit yeah. something out. Um, <laughs> and, um, and, and, to, and so how, that, how those, those projects, which are very community focused, sort of push back. Mm -hmm. Gosh, I mean, you know, it's one of those things like ultimately when we're talking about scholar, scholar identities, we're talking about people's lives, right? And I think that's important to remember um, in whatever context we're discussing it. Um, you know, in this context, uh, typically when we talk about scholarly profiles, um, we're talking about both researcher profiles and the identify, identifiers used to describe those researchers. Um, and these serve a number of different uh, functions. One is to publicly showcase the research output produced by a scholar through their affiliations, their publications. Uh, so there's a very real networking component. Um, and the other is to assess the researcher and their work through measuring, evaluating, and in some cases, predicting the impact of a scholar's research. Uh, I saw a demo um, a number of years ago that for me was quite horrifying in which um, uh, a researcher could input um, an early version of their manuscript, a preprint, um, and an algorithm would read that manuscript. And based on a hundred years of data, um, it had trained an algorithm to anticipate how many future citations that manuscript would receive. And as a result, um, what journal that researcher should submit to, right? Um, and that's 100 years of data that is um, incredibly biased and privileges um, white, cis male, English speaking, uh, you know, voices from North America and Europe, right? And so that's, that's kind of like a grounding to have when we're approaching any of these systems. Um, and so the primary ways in which Wikidata and Wikisite support the development of scholarly profiles is through making bibliographic records available through linked data under a CC license, right? Um, because Wikidata accommodates identifiers like ORCID and DOIs, um, we can connect what we know through Wikidata with what we know through other databases. So one could have, for instance, their own um, you know, institutional uh, setup of Wikibase. And we can use the Sparkle endpoint uh, to query that data, to again, like ask new questions, find new answers. Um, this is really exciting because everything is open um, and community development is encouraged. Uh, and that means that there's uh, an open source tool called Scalia, uh, which uses Wikidata cre to create profiles of scholars, organizations, publications. Uh, so for instance, an individual journal. Um, I cannot speak uh, about this without pointing to the incredible work of two of our uh, fellow Wikibrarians uh, located at IUPUI uh, here in the United States, uh, Marilise Lemos Rojas and Jerry Rod uh, Odell. Um, and so I'm going to share my screen uh, again just for a moment uh, to, to share some of their work. Okay. Uh, so Marilise and Jerry um, have been using Scalia to create scholarly profiles of researchers at their institution. Um, and so this is an example of what um, Scalia looks like. Um, we have initially the most basic information. What has this researcher published? Um, beyond that, it will dig deeper um, into uh, looking at their productivity over time, uh, you know, via the number of publications per year the number of citations those publications received. But it can also look to how they work with other scholars uh, within the bibliographic universe. So it can, for instance, develop a co-author graph, 
right? You can see who their most frequent collaborators are um, and how those researchers are working with each other independent of um, the original scholar. And taking an additional step, uh, running a Sparkle query, um, you know, because Marilise, Jerry, and their colleagues um, at Indiana University, Purdue University, Indianapolis, IUPUI, um, <clears throat> have input this information into Wikidata, we can develop, for instance, a partial co-author graph of all researchers at their institution, right? Um, and begin to see how people are working together across departments, um, you, know, you know, and how the geographic location really sort of shapes that. Well, and I think, um, you know, I think the, the visuals that you, that you just showed are, mm -hmm. I think, explain so well the ways that, that scholarly profiles and the inputting of citation data or bibliographic data into Wikidata or using that application in the context of Wikibase yeah. really creates these, the powerful possibilities of being able to to have an impact on those visualizations. I think one of the challenges in libraries frequently, I think we feel at the, at the sort of mercy of vendors to be able to, to have visualizations like that or to be able to run queries, but being able to actually manipulate the data ourselves is I think a really important piece. And um, you can hear my dog, sorry about that. Uh, and it's really important in the context of equity. And I think we've sort of talked a little bit about this, but, but, you know, I think this is a really important piece when we thought, when we talk about who is visible and not just in the context of the platform itself, mm -hmm. but on the web as a whole, we know that when we create um, structured data or linked data, when we connect identifiers between different platforms, we're building um, those structures of the, of the net. We're making things available to machines in a very particular way. So I wonder if you can sort of speak to the connections between um, citation data, bibliographic data, and particular scholarly profiles and equity. Yeah, I mean, it's such a difficult question um, because I think it can go in a lot of different ways. Uh, Asaf Bartov uh, at the Wikimedia Foundation often says, use Wikidata for good, not for evil. Um, and I think that really speaks to the fact that like it can it can be used to support uh, things across a spectrum of realities um, from, you know, in thinking about equity uh, from a discovery standpoint, I'm really excited about the possibility of making more uh, research visible to the rest of the world um, online uh, research from more disciplines uh, in more languages and from researchers based in different geographic regions. Um, if publishers and libraries contribute data about the publications being produced by their communities, right? So at my institution, my faculty are constantly setting up journal publications, you know, using a personal website, right? They have rich editorial processes and written review processes, but they're outside of um, other sort of uh, discovery mechanisms, right? And so if we can add in information about that to Wikidata, um, if that data is then, you know, about the titles and the authors um, are then translated into other languages as Wikidata really easily allows us to do. Um, if those things happen, there's an opportunity for a more equitable approach to discovery than currently afforded by systems and search engines that privilege English language content published out of North America and Europe, right? So I'm really excited about that, what that does for an ecosystem of ideas um, and for the people that are producing them, right? Uh, but in moving to a linked data environment, right, um, there is that possibility for evil. Uh, we're no longer being asked just to describe the research object, but the person who wrote it. And that raises a lot of questions around how we represent one's identity, one's lived experience. You know, if, for instance, there's a real push to add gender information to a researcher's profile, we can ask more nuanced questions about the ways in which gender relates to um, different publication practices. We might show bias in a particular journal or in a discipline or, I don't know, relevant to our current moment, uh, we might find how a pandemic affects the publication rates of those who identify as men versus those who identify as women and the different ways in which the pandemic um, in their personal lives may be um, impacting their professional ones. 
And so in that context, information about gender is important to have, right? Um, we can ask these questions because of the ways in which the data is structured. Um, but the issue is that once we start adding information about people's lived experiences and forcing them into these concrete categories that are supposed to like, you know, apply to all people in all languages uh, coming from all different backgrounds, you know, we risk causing real tangible harm. Um, we risk, in the case of gender, misgendering someone or perhaps real, revealing something about them to the world that they would choose to keep private. And, you know, in thinking about that harm, we don't have a handle on the ways um, in which that information then goes out into the world. You know, as you were saying, it's under this CC0 public domain license. It can be picked up by all sorts of places, right? Um, we already know that Google and Alexa and Facebook are using it to, um, to answer questions, uh, to inform their knowledge uh, graphs, um, and that can further amplify harm, right? If there's a bias in Wikidata, it can be amplified across all of these different ways. And because of the CC0 dedication, um, you know, there aren't necessarily going to be ways for us to track that later down the line, right? The provenance won't be there. Um, so that's scary. Um, as someone who has been misgendered on Wikidata, that's scary. Um, but this for me is not a reason not to do this work. Um, instead, it's a reason to directly involve the communities that are subject to it. Um, you know, to work with them in developing um, what this looks like. Um, and in this case, that means involving scholars, right? Um, so I work at a large public university uh, that doesn't currently pay for a researcher identity management system. Um, but we have a real need to know more about the research that our faculty produce, right? We're distributed 25 colleges, 31 libraries, right, across five boroughs in the city of New York. It can take me two hours to get to one place, an hour to get to another. I can walk 10 minutes down the street, you know, to get to a third. Um, and we don't know what people are doing, you know, between, let alone sometimes within those um, colleges. Uh, so we need that at a basic level. And so I wonder what, it, what would it look like um, to set up our own instance of Wikidata, um, set up a Wiki-based platform, uh, and then work with our faculty governance body, our university faculty senate, and our very strong union uh, to decide what fields should be included. What information would we capture about faculty researchers? How would it be represented? Using what properties? Uh, who would the information be shared with? Um, and how would it then go out and be used? Um, you know, one of the things that we don't know is like in, in these uh, RIM systems developed by these commercial vendors, who are they partnering with? Um, and who has influence in that, right? We know that um, Relics, the parent company of Elsevier, um, in the United States is, you know, has contracts with Immigrations and Customs Enforcement, right? And are directly using that to, to build surveillance systems. Um, and so how do these products relate to that? Um, we don't know. Um, but by involving faculty scholars themselves, by giving them agency over the ways in which data about them is described, used, and made accessible, um, I think that we can end up in a really different place um, and so that is why I do this work. Um, yeah, yeah I, th I think, that, I mean, those are such important points. And I think something that we've heard and occurred in again and again, I think in these, in these um, webinars is the, is the problem when systems are dominated, mainstream systems are dominated by English, uh, dominated by systems of knowledge that that don't account for other kinds of, of knowledges, but also just thinking about what it means um, for identity mm -hmm. and the ways that we um, are um, thinking about being hospitable in a way, right? In a way that we haven't been in, uh, in systems that universalize. And again, when we look at the, the production of scholarship, then we look at, again, go back to that assembly line. What does that mm -hmm. mean when we talk about people? Right. These are, these, it's not only that the, the researchers themselves, but the communities, research doesn't come out of, out of nothing, right? There's a whole context also of communities that are um, impacted when that research is done and then impacted by the results of the research that, that these are not um, accounted for in a lot of ways. So I think um, talking about 
uh, the importance of bringing that into a system, then we have control potentially over that is, is really vitally important. And so our last question today yeah. has to do with, with a certain, like what, what would you invite um, library workers? Um, what activities could library workers be involved in to, to work at some of these issues? Again, I think the scale can be potentially from smaller actions all the way up to, to um, involving thinking about, about moving to platforms. But um, what, are, what do you think are some of the ways that library workers could get involved? Yeah, so I think as a first step, uh, they can create an account on Wikidata, um, which is an easy thing to do, uh, but sometimes uh, can be a little bit intimidating. Um, and if there is a journal published in your area that's not in Wikidata, whether you're at an academic library, public library, a, you know, another type of special library, um, if there's a journal in your area that isn't represented in Wikidata, add it. Um, then begin conversations with other Wikidatans, uh, maybe even join a Wiki project. Uh, there are specific Wiki projects uh, focused on Scalia. Um, there's another on how to represent academic journals. Um, there's still a lot of questions out there about which properties we should use to describe them. Um, how, for instance, do we uh, reflect the article processing charges that they, um, the fees that they may put to authors? Um, and join the Wikisite mailing list. It's, uh, it's quiet right now, um, but if we add more voices, we can ramp that up. Um, I am a big, big believer that small actions, small edits can have a big impact, right? They create a space for the community to come in and together to create real change. So I encourage folks, library workers, to start there with the tasks that seem manageable and then see where it takes you over time. Thank you. No, I think that's uh, a great message. Um, and yeah, I, I also want to just encourage, encourage folks to, to um, get involved. Um, I'm just going to see if there are any questions from our, our group um, right now. Okay. Um, so thank you so much, uh, Meg, for sharing um, your really valuable experience and knowledge uh, with everyone today. I think, again, especially, I think, very clear in the current moment how um, important the uh, scholarly research process is and to really be thoughtful about um, the implications involved in the, in the production of research and scholarship and the ways that the Wikisite and Wikidata and Wikibase are important avenues for people to consider when it comes to um, doing our work within libraries. So thank you very, very much uh, for sharing with us today. You're very welcome. Thanks so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.